Do you have anything on tonight? Not a thing? Go catch cold. Goodbye. Now that the prank calls are done, let's talk Three Stooges Home Media. You might remember quite a while ago we talked about the giant Three Stooges box set from the early 2000s. I have a whole video that goes disc by disc. And 20 years ago, this would have been the crown jewel of many people's Three Stooges collections. But today, it's completely obsolete. If you're like me, you probably have these sets in your Stooges collection. That'll be the subject of today's video. I thought this was a good time to talk about these because, as you may already know, next month, uh, middle of August there, the Three Stooges shorts were making their way to Blu-ray to celebrate 100 years of Columbia Pictures. Now, it should be noted that not every short makes the transition. This Blu-ray box set includes 100 different Three Stooges shorts. I believe there are 72 with Curly, 26 with Shemp, all originals, no stock footage remakes, and two with Joe Besser. In addition, there are quite a few bonus features, many of which are flown over from the big box of Nux. And I don't think we really talked much about the big box of Nux on this channel. But some of the bonus features that will be making their way from this DVD box to Blu-ray include some of the supplemental cartoons, the solo short films, so Joe Besser, Shemp Howard, and Curly Joe Dorita all made solo films for Columbia while the Stooges were making their films as a trio. And um, not quite all of them, but just about all of them were on this DVD set, and now they'll be making their way to Blu-ray. It also will have the Stooges feature films, their Columbia feature films, things like Have Rocket Will Travel, and one that we have discussed on this channel before, The Outlaws is Coming, one of the last Stooges projects ever, featuring Adam West, no less. That's pretty interesting. The 2000 biopic, The Three Stooges, starring Paul Ben Victor as Mo, that'll be on the Blu-ray set as well. A lot of Stooges fans don't like that film because it plays kind of fast and loose with history. It's not really well written, but it is well cast, and I like it mostly for the scenes where the actors reenact classic Stooges comedy bits. I do think that's well done. You know, they, they did a pretty good casting job on that, but that'll make its uh, transition to Blu-ray. And there'll also be a couple new things on this fancy new box set. For example, the Three Stooges scrapbook television pilot, which has been fully restored, thanks to the help of Curly's grandson, will make its home media debut there. And there's a brand new, I'm guessing it's a documentary or a retrospective, by Leonard Malton. He's done Stooges things before, like he did the Lost Stooges uh, compilation film, that kind of thing. But uh, there's a new thing by him on there too. So this new box set that will be coming out Next month on Blu-ray, even has a sound chip in the box so you can play Three Stooges sounds. Should be pretty interesting and looking forward to it. So I thought, well, let's talk Stooges then. We've talked quite a bit about Stooges in their home media histories before. You might remember that all Curly Shorts made it to VHS, but there was really no rhyme or reason to them. Three Shorts to a tape, usually, and uh, generally just sort of a mixture. But all 97 were indeed made available. If you're like me, back in the 90s or the 2000s, you got out your Stooges book where the filmography was listed, and you fast forward and rewound the tapes until you uh, got the one you needed, and if you wanted to watch them in order or watch particular ones, because it's kind of just a uh, hodgepodge, basically. And sometimes they were themed, like here's one that has three of their World War II era shorts on it. But for the most part, pretty scattered stuff, each tape running about an hour. This is important to note because when the Stooges came to DVD, they followed that same kind of idea, usually going with themed collections, or at least they were marketed as themed collections. As we talked about before, DVDs like Merry Mavericks and Spook Louder don't really do a very good job with the whole themed concept. And we're talking five, six shorts generally, maybe seven. Uh, really not the most economical way to do it, but Columbia held, I should say Columbia and Sony, held on to this idea for a really long time. These solo kind of themed releases with just a handful of random shorts at a time were popular up through the mid-2000s, even when other TV shows were getting proper sort of seasonal releases, season one, season two. Didn't happen with the Stooges, and the colorized releases, those carried on even longer. And although they only featured four shorts apiece, or technically eight because you got the colorized and black and white versions of four different films, 
but they were still pretty light on content, you know, and the price tag didn't always necessarily match what you were getting. But as Stooges fans with very few alternatives, you know, you wanted to upgrade those VHS tapes, you kind of had to shell out and buy them. But enough people complained, enough people wrote Columbia TriStar and Sony and everybody else and said, why don't the Stooges have a proper seasonal release? I don't doubt that some executive there was like, well, the Stooges don't have seasons because they weren't a TV show. And that's true, they don't. But you can still release them like they have seasons. And that's eventually exactly what they did. So let's peel back time to 2007. And let's talk about the Three Stooges collection. We have several volumes to go through. Eight, in fact. So let's take a look and see what's held on Volume 1. So Volume 1 here. It's in red. 1934 to 1936. All four of the 1934 shorts had already made it to DVD. If you had the Curly Classics DVD, you would have all four of the original comedies there. Woman Haters, Punch Drunks, Men in Black, and Three Little Pig Skins. So, 1934 really wasn't, uh, really wasn't too much of a stretch there. But 1935, we hadn't seen a lot of these shorts yet. Even classics like Horses Collars and Pardon My Scotch hadn't made their way there yet. It's also important to note when it comes to 1935, you might remember I gave the Three Smart Saps DVD a scathing review, not just for having only five mere shorts on it, but also because the copy of Three Little Beers, the Golf Stooges short, I wore my Stooges Golf t-shirt again, is actually missing footage. It's missing both a frame of film at one point and then a whole about 15-20 second scene at another point. For this Volume 1 DVD, that was fixed. All the restored footage was put back in. So you didn't have to use it on VHS anymore. Now there was a proper restored print on DVD. And like 1935, there were quite a few Stooges shorts from 1936 that hadn't made it to DVD either. Things like Half Shot Shooters, A Pain in the Pullman. Nice to see all those classics. All of them got a restoration. When this set came out, the Three Stooges.net did some side by side comparison shots and agreed that the picture and sound quality was improved on just about every single film. There were a couple like Whoops, I'm an Indian where they were like, eh, it doesn't look that much different than the previous release. But for the most part, this was a really good set. We have the shorts in order. We have them restored, and we have ones that weren't previously available on DVD being released that way. It's a pretty darn impressive. Real quick, I'll show you the insides too. This pic uh, cover image here, this picture, drew some criticism because it's actually a publicity shot from the 40s. It's not from any of these shorts, but it's a generic enough picture. I don't think it really matters. I like they do the picture collages down the sides. And have artwork on the disc, artwork on the inside and you can see the picture collages there along the top also along the bottom very nice stuff and a description of each short film Here's disc number two Actually, I'll show the front part first there cost wise these weren't really that much more expensive than the individual theme sets had been either I think these usually retailed for like $20, $25, and those theme sets were usually about $15, so you're getting, you know, two discs, several years worth of Stooges material versus, you know, six randomly selected short films, so absolutely the better buy. However, like these themed releases, there's not much here in terms of bonus features, and this is something that's followed the Three Stooges releases throughout history. Very, very little. They could have put the colorized films on there, they could have put on you know, some kind of making of or historical documentary bit, but they didn't do any of that. So no bonus features, but honestly that's okay. No you know, Shemp solos, like they could have done a hit with The Mist, a pair with Punch Drunks or something like that, but they opted not to do it, and that's okay. Really the only time we've seen a major uh, kind of bonus feature release I thought I laid it out there, but I didn't. The Cash and Carry VHS tape had the Curly Shuffle music video on it. I don't think that's ever been released to DVD. So, the Red Volume, Volume 1, was so successful, it was followed up pretty darn quickly with Volume 2. You see an image from Dizzy Doctors on the front of the package there. 
That's the same image they used much earlier on the VHS tape. You can see the sticker. Talks about the fan requested DVD collections. You know, enough people were so happy with Volume 1, they probably wrote in and said, hey, thanks for listening, thanks for making a good, proper, we'll say, again, seasonal Three Stooges DVD release. And Columbia realized that, hey, or Sony, I guess, realized that, yeah, this was definitely worth it. So for 1937, the only short that wasn't previously available on DVD was the aforementioned Cash and Carry. Everything else was. Granted, some of them you'd have to buy the colorized releases for, and Goofs and Saddles, that was only released on the Outlaws is Coming movie. But you could still pretty much find everything somehow. So I'm sure a lot of Stooges fans were like, eh, I'm pretty well covered for 1937. But these all are remastered and restored. So that probably made it worth it. It's either for 1938. We have a couple we haven't seen before, like Tassel, actually one we haven't seen before on this disc is Tassels in the Air. That's a really good one. Omey, the interior decorator. Nice image from Wee oui, Wee oui, Monsieur on the front there. Spin the around for you. Again, they do the picture collages at the top, also at the bottom. Don't know how the lighting is going to look necessarily on those, how well they're going to show up, but they are very nice. Mutz to You was the other short from 1938 making its debut, but quite a few from 1939 hadn't been released to DVD yet. Three Little So-and-Sos, We Want Our Mummy, Three Sappy People, Oily to Bed, Oily to Rise, none of those had been. So definitely a nice uh, surprise there. And like many people, I was so happy with Volume 1, I rushed out and bought Volume 2 as quickly as I could. A good follow-up there. Uh, this one, I know it does have a bonus feature in the sense it has some ads for other uh, DVD releases. I think Meatballs had just come out to home, vid uh, home video, so they put an ad for that in there. And there was a big Ray Harryhausen ad. They had just colorized Earth versus the Flying Saucers, and it came from beneath the sea. And one of the most underrated kaiju films of all time, 20 Million Miles to the Earth. Highly recommend checking that out. But that's about as close to bonus features as we get. Moving on now, we are in 2008 again. In green, we have Volume 3. You can see the same kind of hype sticker on it there. Fan requested. I know there were people who were worried after Volume 1 that that was all we were going to get. And I remember a man who uh, might even still write for Three Stooges Journal Magazine saying how, oh, there were too many rights issues and they couldn't do it and don't expect Volume 2 and all that. And but I was very happy to uh, uh, send him the uh, promotional link when it was announced there too and say one time I can safely say I'm glad you're wrong so in the 40s now for 1940 we'd seen some of these before like you nasty spy and no sense it's no feeling on the colorized sets but we still have some making their DVD debut such as Cuckoo Cavaliers and From Nurse to Worse same deal with 1941 we're seeing things like So Long Mr. Chumps Good stuff there. Picture from a plumbing we will go on the disc art, and you can see picture collages there. Should be the second disc there. Some more of Samoa, Loco Boy Makes Good, What's the Matador, they all make their debut. Shorts like What's the Matador and Sokka by Baby had been featured in the Stop, Look, and Laugh compilation movie that had been released to DVD uh, but the actual shorts themselves hadn't so if you had, were like me and you had a DVD collection, the Stooges collection in the early 2000s you would have seen parts of those ones on DVD but not the whole thing so a lot of good stuff on volume 3 there of course getting into the World War II era shorts as well Columbia, TriStar and Sony they didn't do any censorship on these, thankfully. Sometimes World War II era things, you never know. And uh, they didn't even put any disclaimers like, hey, you know, these jokes about the Japanese and things like that you wouldn't make today. They just kind of let them go. Which is honestly what they'd done for the VHS releases way back in the day. So they didn't make a big deal about it, and fans didn't seem to either. So I guess we were good to go. All right, now we get to the last of the curly ones here in purple. I believe we're still in 2008. Yes, we are. Purple still has the Walmart sticker on it. 
I bought this. I know I went to Walmart really early in the morning. I think I just gotten my driver's license like a little bit before, so I ran in and bought it all by myself. So there you go. But anyway, in purple there. Start off with this disc here. Got a few that we hadn't seen on DVD yet, like They Stooge to Conga, I Can Hardly Wait, A Gem of a Jam, Three Little Twerps. This is a picture from Three Little Twerps, but that shirt, uh, that short, excuse me, was not on this DVD. They just used the picture for some reason. If you open it up, picture from Dizzy Pilots. And you can see some of the images. They don't show up quite as well in the purple, maybe, as on some of the other colors. But, yeah. There you go. Good stuff. And 1943 was a very productive year for the group, so that's a whole DVD unto itself. Very nice. And the second disc there, 1944 and 45, were both much lighter years. So they were kind of stuffed onto a disc there together. For 45, the only short that hadn't been released to DVD was Three Pests in a Mess. That was a good one to have. And for 1944, there were a few busy buddies. The much, you know, uh, reviled and highly controversial The Yokes on Me. Uh, had had made it to VHS. A lot of people said it was banned from ever being shown, but that isn't true, at least back in the 2000s. That's what people would say, but that certainly isn't the case. But the Oaks on Me pops up, as does Idle Rumors, The Stooges Meet the Wolfman. In fact, there's a picture from the Oaks on Me, the ostrich that eats blasting powder there. Picture from that scene. So now we're at kind of a weird crossroads. The bulk of the curly stuff has been released, but not quite everything. And Shemp Shorts are on the horizon. Shemp Shorts started in 1947. Before, there had been DVDs and even one VHS release. I don't think I laid it out, but there had been DVDs and the Wee Wee Monsieur VHS video combined Curly and Shemp. So I know some fans, when these came out, were a little bit reticent, you know, should you have both Curly and Shemp shorts on the same disc? But it had been done. Again, even on VHS, they'd done it. So here we have from 2009. And you can see include Shemp there at the bottom. This is the last of the Curly stuff, 1946. The last Curly short, Half of Its Holiday, was released in 47. And then it's Shemp from here on out. So I'll actually do disc one first. So this disc is predominantly the curly stuff. A few of these shorts hadn't been released to DVD yet, like Monkey Businessman and Rhythm and Weep. It should be noted, people, despite not liking Monkey Businessman, were really hoping for an upgrade. This VHS tape for both the title film and Three Smart Saps used very poor... They look like 16 millimeter TV copies, terrible sound and picture quality. So everyone was hoping that you know, there would be a nice restoration, and indeed there was. Three Smart Saps, of course, had already been restored for its DVD, at least reasonably well. But Monkey Businessman hadn't, and we were left with this really just poor quality print. But not anymore. This release fixed it up. So I do like that short, too. It's got Kenneth MacDonald in it, so that's always a good sign. And there are some really funny lines, mostly just Curly's performance. A picture from a bird in the head there. And then you can see Fright Night out west and Hold That Lion, all with Shemp there at the bottom. Hold That Lion, of course, features Curly in a supporting role. Well, not really a supporting role, more of a cameo. Uh, he's sleeping, and when they take the clothespin off his nose, he barks, that kind of thing. If you see it, you'll understand it. And then we're firmly in Shemp territory. So some, many of these Shemp shorts actually hadn't made it to home video uh, at this point. Things like Hot Scots, Pardon My Clutch, All Gummed Up. Hold that line, actually hadn't either. When it comes to VHS, every Shemp short up through about mid-1949 had been released to VHS. Uh, there are a couple exceptions, like Brideless Groom wasn't released on a legitimate Columbia VHS, but it, as it was in public domain, it was readily available. Same with Malice in the Palace from 1949. But for the most part with Shemp, you could get the early ones and the originals, 
I'll actually show you. We'll come back to this video in a little bit, but there is even an alternate Three Stooges logo with Shemp in the middle on several of these VHS tapes. Not all of the Shemp exclusive ones use that variant. Some still use the curly one, depends when they were released. But it's interesting that they were actually kind of pushing this. Now, there are 20 fewer Shemp shorts than curly shorts. There are 77 Shemp shorts. And quite a few of them are stock footage remakes. You know, they take an existing short film, film a few new scenes, edit it around, or sometimes they take elements from one short, put them into another. Uh, some of the remakes are improvements, like I think Creeps is much better than The Ghost Talks. Um, I like Of Cash and Hash more than Shivering Sherlock's, that kind of thing. Some are much, much worse, like Pardon My Clutch is a lot more fun than Wham Bam Slam is. So, I don't know, it all kind of depends. But the point is, no reason why, you know, you uh, can't have a nice Shemp collection. should also note, some of the remakes and some of the more obscure ones were released on these wacky VHS tapes from Good Times. We've talked about these before. I have no idea why these exist or why they were allowed to be sold or anything like that because I don't know that Good Times ever owned the rights to the Stooges stuff. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but we've talked about these five volumes. So if you're like me, you wanted these tapes because they had some of the rarer films at the time, stuff that we thought would never make it to DVD. All right, firmly in the land of Shemp. Here's kind of where we start seeing shorts making their home media debut. The, there were things like Slap Happy Sleuths and Hugs and Mugs that had never been released anywhere previously. I mean, if you had like a 16mm print or maybe you taped a copy off TV, that kind of thing. But others of these had, you know, especially for 1949, we saw things like uh, Who Done It and Vagabond Loafers. And VHS tapes had covered quite a few of these. Not all of them, though, like Self Made Maids, where the Stooges play basically every part. That had never been released to home media before. Got the light blue design there. And the second disc. Nice picture from the tooth while out on the cover art. And here's a shot from Hula La La on the inside. That's a fun one. So definitely some good ones. And some that weren't released to Columbia VHS, but were on those wacky good times ones like Babysitter's Jitters and Don't Throw That Knife, things like that. So some of these will appear on that new Blu-ray set next month. I know they're using like Fueling Around and, and ones like that. So, But it's going to be kind of touch and go. So you'll have a decent concentration of curly stuff kind of a smattering of Shemp things. I think they only run until about 1953, and they're all originals, and then those two Besser shorts, which we'll get to Joe Besser here in a sec. All right. In orange, second to last volume, and you can see there's a very large hype sticker talking about 3D glasses. So let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. The Stooges did two shorts in 3D in 1953. They did Spooks and Pardon My Backfire. Spooks had been released to 2D on this VHS. I don't know that 3D VHS tapes were ever really a thing. If they were, I never had any of them, but releasing in 2D, much simpler. And all of these shorts can still be enjoyed in 2D. But to celebrate the 3D ones, well, I should go out of order, look at this two first here. Celebrate the 3D ones, they included 3D glasses, and you have the choice to view them in either 3D or 2D. Either one. So that's pretty cool. Pardon My Backfire had never been released to home media before, so that was fun. We start to see more of the stock footage remakes at this point too. Again, some are quite good, like I like Musty Musketeers, I like Scotched in Scotland. Others, like Ripso and Stitch, pretty lame. Bubble Trouble had been released. In fact, I believe that was the most recent Stooges short released on these theme collections. It was on Dizzy Doctors. Weirdly, they released Bubble Trouble, but not the original short film, all gummed up. So, who knows about that? Kind of hard to say there. But yeah, so good to have 3D and good to have those Shemp remakes. We went backwards again, so here's disc one for you. Had a few kind of quirky ones at this point in their career, like He Cooked His Goose, 
Cuckoo Wanna Choo Choo, which some Stooges fans absolutely hate. And we see shorts that use a lot of stock footage, but aren't necessarily remakes, like Tricky Dicks uses the file cabinet scene from Hold That Lion, but it's not really a remake, they just kind of snip that part out to use. Um, let's also talk formatting. A lot of people claim that they don't like the way that these um, are done in terms of like the aspect ratio, but when I played this DVD on my big screen, it's always full screen, as the VHS tapes were. But some people complain that theirs are cropped, so they want, you know, the VHS copies that are formatted differently, presumably full screen. But I don't know. When I try these DVDs out, they're always full screen. So maybe it's just my setup or something like that. I don't know. Now, the Blu-ray set contains the two uh, 3D shorts. And it also uh, has them in 2D, of course. But it has two different types of 3D. I think it's stereoscopic and anaglyph. So, I'm assuming we'll get some fancier glasses. These are just kind of cheapy ones there. And we'll have to wait and see on that, but that should be interesting, and I don't know if you'll have to have anything fancy on your home media setup in order for the 3D to work. Like, I have the 3D Wizard of Oz, but I can't actually watch it in its full 3D format. That kind of thing. Last set. Almost done. So, no Joe Besser shorts had ever been released to home media. You know, the people who had them either had film copies or record them off TV, because some were in the TV syndication package. So we're left with the last few Sheb shorts, most of which are remakes, not quite all of them. We have Gypped in the Penthouse and Blunder Boys, things like that. But for the most part, um, just the remakes left. Again, some better than others. And then all 16 Joe Besser shorts are here. So this set's actually the biggest one. It has three discs. I know a lot of people, you know, years ago said they'd never release the Besser shorts to home media. That they just weren't worth it, you know. No one would buy them, no one would like them. But I'm glad they did. And there are some Besser shorts that I can actually really get into and enjoy. I like Quiz Whiz. I like Oil's Well That Ends Well. A merry mix-up is stupid, but it does have some fun gags. And I kind of like the science fiction ones, you know. Hoss Cartwright from Bonanza was in Outer Space Jitters, but he's made up as a zombie. Bet you you didn't know. Here's the second disc here, and this starts into the Joe Besser era with Hoofs and Goofs, which is a very bizarre short film, but does have some funny parts, though, especially Benny Rubin as the landlord. Worth watching. So we get Joe, there's a scene from Guns a Poppin', which is a fun remake of Idiot's Deluxe. But it changes the story up enough that's actually interesting. There are a couple Besser shorts that people generally avoid and that I can't get into. Things like Horsing Around and Sweet and Hot, which are... There's something. All right. And then we have the last disc. We'll get all the way up to 190 Stooges shorts. All wrapped up there with sappy bullfighters. The Stooges shorts were long done filming by 1959, but the last few were, weren't released till then. Some pretty interesting stuff. So the new Blu-ray set, which I guess will to some degree supersede these DVD releases, will be out next month. Amazon le recently lowered the retail price. I think it's about $150 now. I have to double check. I believe August the 13th is still the date for release. So I'll be purchasing it out of curiosity, but I definitely will not stop watching these sets. These sets are a lot of fun. I bought them all when they were new and were released. It was the perfect way to build your Stooges library very quickly and also very comprehensively. So the shorts look and sound amazing even today. You know, for these DVDs that are creeping up on 20 years old, honestly, sound and picture quality, pretty darn good. So I'm curious what the Blu-ray is going to bring to the table. I have to see how much restoration work is done. I mean, anything that's done on film, I guess, in theory can be cleaned and polished till the end of time, but we'll have to take a look and see. Now, the, all of these volumed releases were indeed bundled together at 1.2, but I didn't buy the box set, as I already had them all individually, so there was no need. And that, my friends, wraps up our Stooges adventure for today. So why don't you scram, you knuckleheads?